talk about the difference between the the experience of okay yeah whatever just do it your way kind of thing where you don't really have the ability to let go of whatever that 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 situation is and you bottle it inside versus okay that's fine no problem Shit. right you get it right like oh it's, i get it <laughs> yeah yeah it's it, it's a totally different thing and it takes and meditation helps you get to that point where and i'm bringing this up because of what you just said i i remember like if if i got into an argument with my wife you know 10 years ago or whatever it was that was you know early in in my meditation practice it might take me hours or days to to really come to grips with whatever it was and let it go and be okay with it like okay that's okay i let it go i don't need to be right i don't need to be the one who is winning here i don't need it's like it's fine i can let it go it might it might have taken me a long time then now if i get into an argument with my wife it i can let it go literally in seconds now, sometimes it might go a few minutes and that's a really long time for me and it's pretty rare. It has to be something I'm probably like pretty passionate about or really triggered about. But I can get into that kind of energy of, you know, that negative energy or whatever. I got to be right or I got to, you know, be the one who's winning or whatever that subconscious thing might be. And I can literally see it and go, oh, nope, that's not what I want. Um, it's okay. I let it go. And and I can let it go literally in seconds most of the time. And so the, the beautiful thing that I'm sharing here for everyone tuning in is not to, you know, toot my horn about this. It's because of having a meditation practice for years that I have very few stressors than I used to. I have way less stress in my relationships than I used to. I have, you know, way less things that trigger me and cause me to get outraged than I used to. They still happen from time to time. I'm not levitating yet, you know, <laughs> not enlightened yet, you know, maybe one day, but no, certainly not yet. Um, but I, I have way less than I used to and and I can overcome them almost instantly most of the time. And and the power you have for yourself through this practice is so amazing because you don't get stressed out very often. And because of that, you're going to be healthier, you're going to think better, you're going to be happier, you're going to have more peace in your life, you're going to have an upregulated upreg immune system more often, your brain, just as you talked about all the scientific studies, is going to be younger, uh, telomere length, you know, can increase, you know, chronic inflammation can be reduced, all of these things can happen. But on a day to day basis, it's like, hey, I just things just don't bother me as much as they used to. Did you find that yes. with yourself as well? 100%. So as you were sharing about your moment of revelation, when you woke up on that couch, on that mattress, that smelled like pee. And you had that moment of like, Ooh, like I can see my thoughts. What I recalled was the first time I had the experience you just described of being with my husband and him being mad at me and me rather than just jumping in to like be right and be filled with ego could stand back and say, Oh, you are right. And I could like, see all of the ego rising. I could feel all of the like, you know, the tension that starts to build as you're like, oh, you know, it's this is so stupid. It's usually better dishwasher. <laughs> this is like <laughs> early in our marriage, like 80% of the arguments. Um, and I was like, why do you need it so specific? This is driving me crazy. And and he'd be like, put the dish this way. And I'd be like, oh worry. And you know, he totally tense about it. And in my meditation practice, you know, I talked about being able to observe your thoughts and not get caught up in them and let, let them go. After you build that facility, you can then move on to experiencing your emotions in the same way. So um, I would see the emotion of tension rise and I would see the emotion of resistance rise. And I remember like the time so viscerally when I could see that rise and I could be like, why am I resisting? Like, why is it so important that I put the dish in my way rather than his way? Does it matter? No. Do I lose anything? No. Whoa. And I like, it was like a revelation, like literally a revelation that this resistance that I carried for so long for no reason, because I never stopped to think about it, to experience it, to realize that I could do something about it. 
you know, it used to just rise and overtake me and I'd be stuck in that state. And now I could see it rise. I could say, oh, I can just like move aside because you're just a feeling, you know, the feeling would rise, the feeling would fall. And you'd be like, that was actually useless. And I don't need to get caught in that emotional trap any longer. And it's the process of meditation that teaches you both the observation as well as equanimity. And the idea of equanimity is being okay with what is, not resisting the world around you. Um, because there's so much in our world that we either can't change or it just doesn't serve us to spend time changing, yet we continue to resist against it. And as we resist, we create emotional tension. We create, you know, an, an urge and a need, a holding, a clenching, a holding onto, you know, a, a, I must be right. I, 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 I. And when you accept that the thing just is and that you don't need all of that holding and clenching intention, it just that's what it is, then you can let all of those feelings just pass through you. And all of a sudden the world becomes so much calmer because you're not in an internal battle and resistance with, you know, meaningless things constantly. Like, wow, does a sense of peace just arise when you accept what is, when you step into equanimity. Thanks for listening to the Nathan Crane podcast. If you found value in today's podcast, please share it with others. Subscribe to catch future episodes and leave a rating and a review. For more information or to connect with Nathan, check him out online at www.nathancrane.com and follow him on Facebook and YouTube at Nathan Crane. Until next time, this has been the Nathan Crane Podcast.